Welcome to the How to Find Your Passion Now podcast. This podcast helps you to navigate your way to the career or business you want in life. We give you the tools you need in order to move into your true purpose in life. One thing we know for sure is everyone has a gift. Are you using yours today? Now let's get started with your host, Abdul Salam Muhammad. What's going on, people? Welcome to episode number three of How to Find Your Passion Now. I'm your host, Abdul Salam Muhammad. I know that sounds foreign to some people. Like, where is this guy from? Like, what's this kind of name, Abdul Salam Muhammad? Actually, you know, um, something I haven't revealed to a lot of my audiences. You know, I actually was born uh, Bradford Moore. I actually... um, Accepted Islam, 1995 in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. I saw this guy that would come to my station a lot with this long name. His name was uh, Naji Alaji. That's that that rolls off my tongue now, but back in the days, boy, was that a tongue twister. And I remember having a conversation with this guy, striking up a conversation. And when I was in Cuba, you know, I was I was actually in a um, interesting place. You know, if you have a family or anything like that, and you had, let's see, let's say, for instance, you a guy, and the nation tells you, hey, uh, guy, you're going to have to leave your family for six months. And you're a young couple. That's going to be hard on you. It's hard enough to leave your family for a weekend, let alone six months. So, you know, I'm going through that process. Um, I hear this, see this guy with his name. And, you know, he's religious and I want to know more about it. So I start going to his um the, I wouldn't say his house, but the place that he lived. And he was a higher rank than me, too. He, this guy was like uh, almost like a first sergeant, if that's what you know in the military. In in the um, army, you can go the highest rank as a NCO sergeant, not an officer, is sergeant uh, major. So he was he wasn't a, um, he wasn't a sergeant major. He wasn't a first sergeant was the next highest. I mean, was the next highest before you get to sergeant major he was a master sergeant and you know usually in this time master sergeants wouldn't hang with people of my rank they were in charge uh which is my which is the reason why his roommate was the captain he was the highest ranking sergeant and then he roommated with a captain so he would do these things. He would go fishing, and, and, and he was the most peaceful guy. Everybody, when they got off work, I stayed on a cruise ship. I had it made, people. When I say cruise ship, I'm talking about we had five-star meals morning, noon, and night. I mean, it was just ridiculous how, um, you know, how great it was. So... <laughs> I would talk to this guy and and he would change into like these robes, the robes that the the Arabs would wear. Did you see where in Saudi Arabia, you know, he would change this and it looked like the most comfortable clothing. And we would have these deep conversations into the night about religion. And, you know, before that, you know, I'm 20, you know, not even am I 21? I'm close to 21, I think. And, you know, most people's mind in the military and most of my friends, well, on their mind was when they got off work, they were worried about drinking and basically, you know, having a good time. That's that's what we're going to do. But here I am having these in-depth conversations about religion, which I thought was the, one of the most fascinating things. So long story short, you know, through conversation and, and exchange, I, I accepted Islam. And no, I'm not trying to uh, bring you into Islam. <laughs> I just, I actually, I started this podcast and I said my name and it kind of took me down that that road of that's basically what happened. That's how it came a name. Because some people always ask me like, are you from 
uh, Nigeria or something like that? Because I'm 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 a um, African American guy. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. I'm from right here, U.S. You know, I know the name is is different, but um, yeah. I mean, for God's sake, you have people with, and I don't want to say this word Muslim name because there's no such thing as a Muslim name. But you know, you have people from Indonesia named Abdul Salam, um, Bosnia Abdul Salam, Russia because <laughs> a lot of Muslims in Russia Abdul Salam. So I mean, it's it's one of those things. So that's my uh, quick Islam 101 class for you. <laughs> so let's get into the show, people. What is it about today? Today it's about happiness. How many of you are happy? And when I say happy, I mean the song like for real, because I'm happy. <laughs> that kind of happy, right? And is anyone really happy? So let me paint the picture here. How many people do you know right now? And you could be one of them that are actually living life with no purpose, meaning you know you're great at a certain thing, but yet you're too chicken to actually start that thing. It crosses your mind maybe three, four times a week. You've seen other people do this thing that you're doing. But somehow you can't force yourself to get started in this thing. You know, Warren Buffett said something that was pretty interesting. I don't know why some people follow their passion and some people don't. But Warren Buffett said by age 12, actually he said when he was eight years old, he actually knew what his passion was. But by age 12, he had read pretty much every book on finance in the Omaha library. I'm going to repeat that again for those for, for those of you who missed that. By age 12, he had read almost every book on finance in the library. So here's my question to you. If you know what your passion is, are you educating yourself in that field? Because I'm getting ready to do a speech today. I'm in this um, entrepreneur think tank where entrepreneurs basically just kind of take a deeper look into their business. And we all help each other and we, you know, we have eyes on each other's business and we go from there. But one of the things I'm going to talk about in my three minute pitch that I'm going to give these guys today is because we pitch in front of each other. Is how many of you in this room are happy? And I'm sure some people will raise their hand. And I, then I will say, let me explain this a little further. You raise your hand because you're happy. Now, I want to talk about the career and job side. Now. You guys, and, and I'm, you guys are my audience here, by the way. <laughs> so I'm talking as if I'm talking to the group. So you guys have all started up here and there's not much money coming in your business, right? So how many of you are still happy, even though there is no money coming in your business? And that's where I think passion lies and it, why it's so important. Here's why I mean that. Passion is the fuel that gets you through the days when there's no money coming in. Think about it. The reason why people only give the gym two weeks tops. When they're doing their. Um, what do you call it? The, the new <laughs> I forget the name of it. The New Year's resolution. Is because they don't get the immediate results. I know someone that went 
to the job market and was only there for a couple of weeks and was ready to go because they didn't get the immediate results. You get a double reward when you follow your passion. But when you don't follow your passion and there's no money coming in, all you're getting is frustration. Because remember, the passion, the gift that you have is something that, hold on, wait for it, you love doing. You get lost in this thing. When Beethoven would get up and put 26 coffee beans in this cup and then go down and start working on music, there could have been times that he didn't get paid for any of that. But this was his routine. When when Beethoven's wife woke up, she woke up and she knew she was laying beside a musician. A musician. I can't even say that. I, I got <laughs> my big tongue. I can't even say that. She knew that. When Michael Jordan's wife, when they were together, she knew she was waking up beside a basketball player. Now, if you have a spouse, who is your spouse waking up next to? And if you're single, who are you looking in the mirror at when you wake up in the morning time? Who? That's the question that you should be asking yourself on a daily basis. If you don't know that answer. And if you know the answer, the next question you should be asking yourself is, how do I get to see that person more? How can that person provide a living? Because I know that I'm supposed to be trying to become a master at something. You see, that's the world we don't live in now. Master at something. If you study the greats, they knew what they were in. And then they would go become an apprentice. The men, the apprentice was someone who was already great in that field. You have people like that today. They call it mentorship. They go find a mentor in their field. They become that person's shadow. And before you know it, later on, they become that person, but their version. Powerful. But nobody's trying to find that one thing. Everybody wants to be a jack of all trades. We have a new business idea every 30 seconds. And if the, the business idea that we come up with doesn't work in a minute in 30 seconds, then we have to come up with another one. So we spend our life going to this, going to that, going to this, going to that, going to this, going to that. What are you known for? What makes you tick? Boy, if you could answer that question and live that. I'm not saying that's all happiness where, where it lies. But boy, wouldn't life be just a tad bit better? I knew this morning. I was going to wake up and do this podcast because I've been trying these new things while I've been doing this block. Time block. Because I'm the ADHD type. Boy, can I change an idea in seconds. That's my, I guess you could say my DNA. <laughs> so it took me a while to get to this place where I'm at. But I know every day I can't just be sitting on the couch because I work from home. I can be sitting on the couch you know, trying to just get it going. I know what I need to work on daily. But you may be somewhere else, a.k.a. job or anything, something like that. You may be there and you can't get to work on your thing that makes you tick. And it frustrates the heck out of you. You clench that steering wheel every time you go into the parking lot and you like why am i here and then you let that frustration build up so much to the point that one day you prematurely leave and then if you prematurely leave that place 
Now you're frustrated. Now you say, finally, I want to do my one thing, but there's one problem. You don't have any money. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. If you don't have money and you're trying to live and pursue your passion, that equals, and I'm no Einstein, but that equals frustration. If you're worried about living and eating, it's going to be hard for you to really focus on your passion. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been people, lots of stars that have been homeless while they were pursuing their passion. They said, you know what? I would rather not have food and, and, and shelter over my head. I'm going to live in this car of mine until something happens. Now, you can make it that way. I have seen it, but I would not recommend, especially if you have a family, uh, going to your wife or going to your husband and say, you know what? I think I'm going to live in a car until I can actually figure it out. That probably wouldn't go so well. So it's all about being responsible and doing it the right way. You know you want to get there, and you know that even if you take a small step it's closer than you were last week, right? If you want to start saving some money and things like that, it's a better direction and you're moving on the road and you weren't there that you weren't there last week. So it's all about taking your time. And I'm not talking about a, uh, a turtle pace, but what I am talking about is doing one thing a day. That's a whole nother podcast. I won't go too deep into that one but yeah i mean sometimes when you break things down uh very small and then you move in that direction calculate it not scatterbrain but calculate it in that direction a lot of times you can get stuff done and pretty have and have a pretty high rate of productivity so that's the talk today people you gotta find the thing that makes you tick You got to find that thing because that is part of happiness. You already have, I wouldn't say 50%, I would say 35% of happiness. You have achieved it right away once you find that thing that you can get lost in and you're doing it on, if not a daily basis, five times a week. Because that's where you're going to find the mastery. That's where you're going to find where you start feeling good and you're like, you know what? I don't feel so bad. That's what you want to, that's where you want to be. That's exactly where you want to be good people. So I'm going to leave you with that. I don't want to talk too long. You know, I'm just glad I'm in the podcast mode. I'm just glad I'm talking about this subject and I'm just glad that I'm going if to you want this further information in the description box, Meaning you will find a link. I have asked to how to find your passion one on one course. So, a course that will basically that, I hope kick that you in your butt and great tell you, day. hey, buddy, hey, and I hey hope you're going to go out there and give you best. Let's get going. And I hope you have to have new information introduced to you go if you've been doing something for quite some time and it hasn't been working. So, your go passion. over, make a small investment. Thank you monthly investment and you will get courses weekly and daily well let me just say that again daily and weekly (laughs) i said it backwards on passion 101 so go over there small investment make the purchase and you will get on the road to start discovering your passion